In 1916, what folklore is referred to as a witch war was tried in the county seat of Kinston in Lenore County, North Carolina. Reed Worley and father and daughter Anthony and Dora Davis accused the others of cursing one another around the time that Reed's infant suddenly passed away. That year, Reed was staying with his relatives, shown in the 1910 and 1920 censuses for the Pink Hill community as John W. and Laney Worley. He doesn't appear in any censuses, leading some to wonder if his first name was a pseudonym and was actually the 25-year-old son of the couple, John A. Worley. If the man involved was their son, he was single and living with his parents in 1910 and single and living alone in 1920. One of their neighbors, Anthony Davis, called Little Andy by the community, was a wealthy farmer. His father, also named Anthony, was once the largest landowner of the county. He was a Confederate soldier with Company K in the 61st North Carolina Infantry. He was 71 years old at the time of the trial. He and his wife Betty Elizabeth Smith Davis would welcome their 45-year-old daughter Dora and their grandson back into the family home. Dora had been married in 1893 to Jonas Howard, who passed away 17 years later. Their first children, twins, passed away shortly after being born, but they would go on to have three more children. She married William Stroud in 1909, but he passed away the next year after she gave birth to their son, who was also called William. Their son was only six years old when the trial took place. When Reed's infant passed away that year, he blamed Dora for some reason. In court, she would recall how grief-stricken and angry. He had come to their home and had threatened her, telling her that some of your people in less than three weeks is going to be dead and you will never know how it come about. She would go on to say that Reed had drawn Pap's picture on the barn door, piled up nine different kinds of brushes in front of it, set them afire, and when they blazed up, he shot Pap's picture right through the blaze, whereupon Pap wielded in his chair and began dwindling away. In William Henderson's 1866 book, Notes of the Folklore of the Northern Counties of England, he documents this Swedish sort of rite would have been used on Midsummer's Eve, the shortest night of the year, to have a suspected witch reveal themselves after casting a curse. Reed denied practicing any sort of witchcraft and said that the shot that she had probably heard was from when he had shot a screech owl. He didn't think anything of shooting the owl at the time, but immediately after, Dora's father, Anthony, had become partially paralyzed and his health had started declining to the point that he had to use a wheelchair. The implication was clear. Reed believed that Anthony had been able to transform himself into a screech owl and that when he had shot it, it had injured the old man. The connection with the case to the screech owl could be lost on modern audiences. Owls have long been considered an omen of impending death in the family once they show up at a person's home. But history is right with tales of evil spirits and witches taking on the appearance of owls to bring about horrible things. In ancient Roman tales, this sort of spirit was called a strix, and in Jewish tales it was called a lilth. Both would appear screech owls and bring about what is now called sudden infant death. In Native American Eastern Cherokee tales, skeely means witch. They are people who can either by physical transformation or by projecting their spirit in the appearance of a great horned owl or a screech owl, spy on or deliver curses to others. This motif of witches transforming into owls can also be seen in northern Mexico and Texas where they are called La Lechuza and thought to transform into barn owls to drain the energy of their victims. Little Andy had hired Henry E. Shaw to represent him and his daughter, enacting an old 1679 law that ordered courts to investigate felonies, witchcraft, enchantments, sorceries, and magic arts, among other crimes. However, the law had not been enforced since the 18th century, so the case was dismissed. After the hearing, Little Andy told his lawyer that he was doomed and Reed would start placing curses on him again. His health was already in steep decline and he feared for his life and the life of his wife, daughter, and grandchild. To try to get through to his client, Henry was recorded as saying, Don't you realize that you are now utterly exempt from the influence of any witch, and especially this man? Don't you see he has come into this courthouse and denied the faith, laid his hand on the Holy Bible, and sworn that he has no such power, and don't you know that his power is now gone forever? Apparently this made little Andy happy, and apparently his health recovered immediately. It's not documented how the neighbors got along afterward. There were no more judgments for any of them. But two years later, no one would be worried about black magic. In 1918, the Spanish flu swept across the world. It's been estimated that one third of the world's population contracted the virus and that it killed 50 million people. One of its victims was little Andy, who died that year at the age of 73 years old.